We have this large project in Cambodia to try and reduce the risk of disease spillover from animal populations into humans. There's concern that these could lead to a threat of a human pandemic, which would lead to um, a massive loss of life. Bats and small mammals are, are two key reservoirs for zoonotic agents, and zoonotic agents are viruses and bacteria that have the capacity to, to infect humans. We wanted to make sure that we, we were able to sample bats and small mammals in every habitat type and in every province in the country. We have an international research team comprised of staff from Cambodia, um, Singapore, uh, the United States from, from California at UC Davis, and then also we have a small mammal and bat expert from Thailand who comes in for the field research, and Ireland. So we have a rat team and a bat team. The, the rat team collects the traps in the morning to take biological samples, uh, which includes rectal swabs, oral swabs, um, feces and urine, blood samples, uh, comb for ectoparasites, and also take morphometric measurements. And then the bat team does the same thing, but usually at night time, and they, they take the same biological samples as the rat team. There's been a lot of increased recognition that bats can sometimes be important hosts for certain uh, viruses. What's less known is their potential or ability to spill over. And so really what the project is ultimately allowing us to do will be to predict what bats species are host to what kinds of uh, viruses and so forth. And so knowing the prevalence of these kinds of viruses helps us to understand the possibilities in which public health concerns might arise. We will take this kind of lesson learned to enhance our capacity to respond to zoonotic outbreak or disease outbreak. We conduct a lot of training on all aspects of the project. We hope that from doing this that we build up the scientific capacity, the technical expertise within the country to better prepare the country to detect and to respond to these emerging pathogens. The locations can be pretty remote. Usually the road conditions, they're usually quite potholy, bumpy, extremely muddy. I mean, we were lucky today that we didn't have to get out and push through some big muddy puddles. When it was described to me last night, I thought it was going to be a dirt road, but it wasn't. It was uh, about 60% asphalt and maybe 40% dirt, so you can see it had been clearly eroded. And it was a rough ride to get out there, uh, and that's usually most of our sites. When we sit on the car, it's like bumping, like we uh, riding on the horse. Field work is not for the weak, it's taxing. And last night we set up mist nets and we trapped bats. So when you catch one in a mist net, any kind of bat, the first thing to do is to figure out which way it came in because you essentially have got to extract it out backwards. Uh, tonight was very successful. We caught 10 bats. So in a site like this, uh, yeah, it's, it's been a very good night. We wrapped up at probably 12.30 and then we got back to the hotel at about 2.30. So this project is very important for my country and we hope that uh, the project can help them for the future when the, the disease is break out. We're interested in, in two main things. We're interested in who are the, the bat and the rat species that are occupying the sites that we're trapping at? And then we're interested in the ectoparasite and then the virus and bacterial communities that are infecting or infesting those, the small mammals and bats. One of the most important thing is that the projects teach us how to do the bat sampling, also the, the rat sampling, so we can be experts. So when we're handling these animals, we need to make sure that we're doing it in a humane fashion so they're not getting hurt. We also need to ensure that our staff is, is not getting exposed and that makes us a little warmer, a little tighter, a little hotter. So we need to make sure that we're, we're looking after each other in the field. We normally set the traps about 10 paces away from each other. So we just count 10 and it should be in that kind of vicinity. I think we have a rat. We do have a rat. Our funding is through the U.S. Department of Defense, the Defense Threat Reduction uh, Agency. And Cambodia was, was, a, was a country that was of interest to, to DITRA in funding. It also had um, the complementary laboratory capacity and um, field capacity, wildlife expertise. And we want to make sure that the results of this project are getting to the funders, but that they're also getting to the policymakers. 
So what we're hoping is we can sit down and talk with policymakers after we develop these maps so they can use these to guide future surveillance efforts, but that also we can sit down and understand kind of biodiverse or bio-rich hotspots in Cambodia and, and use those to guide conservation um, policies. So we're making sure that we're preserving sites where we have a, a species that may be vulnerable. In all honesty, it, it would be impossible to do without the uh, involvement of the Forestry Administration in Cambodia, who are the, the lead partners in country. So once we collect the samples in the field, we like to maintain a cold chain for sample integrity, and then we're bringing those back to the National Animal Health and Production Research Institute in Phnom Penh. And that's where we're going to be performing all of our laboratory analysis. I love being outside and working with animals, being surrounded by nature, different ecosystems and habitats. I love the fact that I get to meet and work with different people from different walks of life. The Cambodian people are really friendly. They don't speak English. They'll always try and find someone who can help me out. They're a really friendly people in general. I love to working with this team because everyone uh, know what they have to do like when we start to, to set the station or processing the animal. Everyone just go to their own, own chair and they know what, what they have to do. Our team is, is passionate, they're smart. Uh, I, I feel really fortunate that we have a solid group and, and every field sampling trip that we go out, you know, we get stronger and stronger.